Theme song. 2.0. And the Halo music kicks in just as your shit reaches the eye of the storm. You're in uh, for a good time. I've heard of this game. This is about Commander John Sputum and his quest to defeat the Hello Kitties. Yeah. So I've been playing a bit of Halo 2 because it got released on PC. Mm -hmm. Anniversary update and shit. And um, I've just been playing old games and I want to get... I want to wax nostalgic and talk some history and shit. Because I actually know a lot about Halo, like, from the dev point of view and shit That's like good, that. That's good, because I know fucking squat all about it. Like, I didn't really touch the OG Xbox. Mm. Like, a friend of mine had one. And a Dreamcast. Fucking la Mr. Stairs on the inside of your house. Motherfucker. Yeah. Um, I had a Dreamcast. I don't regret that. Yeah, Dreamcast was a cool console. And, uh... So, shooters for me, I think the earliest shooter I can remember is Doom on the PC, for me, personally, and I had free will Wolfenstein. All I need to know is did Actually, maybe Wolfenstein was, no, Wolfenstein was at my neighbor's house. It he had a PC have, yeah, at the time, like, and that was, I saw it, we were never really allowed to play it because we were kids, mm. and it was daddy's game, <laughs> and then I remember dad had a PC, and he got the Doom... And it was Simpsons Doom. And Zoom. back then, like, it was all re-sprited and shit to Simpsons. Yeah. That was fucking mind-blowing to me yeah. as a child. Um, no, fucking, that, that was the crazy thing about, because I remember downloading, like, Doctor Who Doom fucking ages ago. Yeah. Like, it took a long fucking time. Like, that was call on the phone internet. You had to talk to the gals in the fucking, you know, switching station. Hello, Mabel. Yeah. Connect me to a five kilobyte picture of porn. All the Mabels and Mavises and Eustaces and Ursulas. Look at that dude's face. Mm. Mighty collection of lesbians. I did read an article once about like, you know, she was like, I think a writer or a columnist. Can't quite remember. I might be wrong. I can't even remember her name. The point is she was like a lesbian from the olden days and talked about working in one of those like fucking you know, switching stations. And apparently that was pretty good, pretty good fucking action if you were gay in like the fucking 50s and 40s and shit. Yeah, that's fair. Which is funny because that's also just what I'd consider a massive stereotype. Mm. Uh, it's one of those ones that's accurate. Yeah. So what was I saying? It's like, where do all the lesbians go? Telephone place. Oh yeah, PCs. And then when I sort of got into them myself was definitely the 64, personally for me. Goldeneye. Oh, yeah. And shit like that. Playing that with friends, that, that brought out the competitive element in Golden, me early. Uh, Goldeneye was just... The 64 in general was just a multiplayer beast. It was so good. Like, I mean, I love, like, you know, No Mercy and sort of, like, particularly at the time, preferred WWF. But, like, fucking WCW versus NWO Revenge. I, the, uh, when that came out, that was fucking huge. A friend of mine lived in a dingy... Downstairs, not quite under the ground, but downstairs enough flat. Yeah. It was like always twilight, regardless of what hour it was. <laughs> I <laughs> fucking moldy. I miss those sorts of rooms, dude, to be honest. Yeah. Like there's something nice about being in a lovely, you know, newer house, but the dinge sometimes you miss. <sighs> I mean, I I understand that. But I'm also very conscious of the unpleasant bits of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Cause I've I still have friends that live like that. Oh man. You know, like and it's just like these share houses in West End where you know on a good day there's not like an abandoned Look, needle if in the Dust is green area. or blue, I'm gonna say that's an issue. Like they have a very distinct smell. I think yeah. it's a specific breed of Brisbane mold Ugh, that just gives I can these smell places. It now. Yeah, Ugh, it's, it's just, rising it's... in my throat. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah, golden on that. And so as I was maturing, what fucking year was Halo released? I don't know where my phone is. Two thousand one? Was I can't Xbox remember. Two thousand one? Because I know PS two was two thousand. Because uh, the Dreamcast was ninety nine. PS two was two thousand. It might. I, th I feel like the Xbox was after, but I, you know, again, I barely fucking remember that. that. I think you're correct. I think March 2001. You know, that's 20 years ago now. That's fucking... 
So yeah, the Grandpa um, Morton struggling to fucking put a memory together. I think Halo was one of the first games I was really became a fan of, like a, as a series. Because before then, I like I would say Pokemon would be the other game that I was a big fan of. But then Halo came out. Well, I remember like going over to David's house and seeing it and just being like, wow, yeah, that is fucking insane. And there's nothing, you know. Nothing looked like this no. before. So, also, I love this. You can switch between the classic and the current. Touch of a button. Wow, that actually is really impressive the way you can just do that. Like, the speed of it is, is, yeah. is the bit that's uh, getting me. Like, literally, just like in real time. <laughs> you got a bit. God, the lighting, like, really, lighting has added so much to games. Yeah. So, Dad, I had a GameCube at the time and a Game Boy Advance. Those were, my, like, my consoles. And Dad said, what comes into my room just goes, what's better? PlayStation 2 or an Xbox? And I'm like, what do you mean, what's better? And he's like, no, no, it was like, if you had to have one, which one? And I'm like, he's going to fucking buy me a console. And I'm like, I'd played Halo to a friend's house and it just blew my mind. And he was a friend that I competed against in games. So I'm like, I have to have an Xbox. At the time, I wasn't into RPGs or anything. So we driving games. So the PS2 no, didn't like, really I, appeal you know, to me. Yeah, the big ones for me were Dreamcast and PS2 because they had all the fighting games. Yeah. Like that was a big thing for me getting the Dreamcast was that had uh, Third Strike. It had a bunch of the King of Fighters. Yeah, at the time, I was young. I didn't yeah. know these sorts of things. Like I'd played... Oh, no, like FPS is... Were and are, you know, really still your chance. No, but like, what I'm saying is, like, for me, I never even thought of fighting games because mm. those were things I played at the arcade. And right. I didn't really research into them, so I didn't know well, they that were was, on consoles. Yeah, that, that was because I used to go to a friend's house I got and play. Lost and turn um, I don't think it was Alpha 3. I think it was Alpha 2 on the PlayStation 1. Mm. It might have been Alpha 3. I can't really remember. Um, no, it was Alpha, Alpha 2 because there wasn't the fucking... Alpha 3 and 2 were both on PS1. Um... And, you know, aside from loading times, it was fairly, you know, arcade perfect. Like, there, there are some differences, but, like, you know, for all intents and purposes, playing it at home, it was, you know, compared to the SNES version or, like, the fucking 16-bit versions of, um, you know, games back then, it was, it was nuts. So, like, you know, having fucking, you know, King of Fighters 99 on the Dreamcast, fucking Third Strike on the Dreamcast, um... I had third strike on the Dreamcast and the, yeah, the Dreamcast stick. That was the first time I actually started getting, like, reasonably good at a fucking fighting game. Parries, baby. Shitful execution, but so amazing anyway, parries. Back on topic. The, um... Doesn't so I got an like Xbox. That. Yeah. And I never had Halo. I never owned it. Did because... the guys change when... Like, the, did the living NPCs change when you... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh... White? Black. Rights? All no right. So yeah, the um, I never had this game because by the time the Xbox had been out a bit. So this is a two. And right? no, no, number one. No. I never owned number one oh, okay. because the bundle stopped including Halo right. because they it was by this time they were selling the console by itself. Yeah. They just were like, "Fuck you! Here's a demo disc of shit things." <laughs> um, so I used to borrow it off a friend, and I just played it countless, countless, countless. And just pound it out and pound it out. And I remember waiting for two just so much. And it was so much of my young adult life just playing this game. We found a way to connect it to the internet through a system link program you ran on your PC. Mm. You could play against other people. It was amazing. What was, like, what internet connection were you using back then? It was at my friend's house. Mine wasn't strong enough. It may have been, like, real early it ADSL. Was, yeah, it would have been 128 to 256. Yeah. What was that like? As I... To us, it felt I good. Think I played but we it. didn't know anything different. Yeah. With all due respect, sir, this I don't remember the first fucking online game I played. Because these games weren't made for online, so you didn't see lag in natural ways. Yeah. Oh, that face. Ah. The so number two actually changes. You can do it in cutscenes as well. Yeah. And it's fucking nuts because they redid the cutscenes in actual CG and shit. It's not just in game. Yeah. Oh, so they actually redid that this isn't using the engine. No, no, this is. Oh. Number two. All right. Number two, they... Oh, so this is the first one? Yeah, this is the oh, number one. Oh, I thought we were playing two. No, no, no. I'm saying I've been playing two. Oh, right, right, right. Just started number one. Yeah, but I don't... I don't know what they look like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's Cortana. Yeah, no, People I know People want to fuck her. No, I know that. That's Captain Keys. People want to fuck him. 
Yeah, I kind of get that. Thank you. I think a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of what you'd call the bottom personality. Mm. Uh, that you, you you get that in men and women, like in the oh, gays that line, and dude, the women. Just yank me. Huh? You said yank me. I know. Fucking great. Good luck, man. I mean, there's not a lot of bits on a woman you can go away with yanking. True. Like you know, when you gonna yank a tit? That's gonna Imagine hurt. Try that. Yeah. Like ah, oh, baby. Gonna yank your tits. <laughs> like, no. I yank your mud. Yeah, no. Like, don't no yank one, anything. Yeah, <laughs> no one wants a flap yank. Like, that's gotta be unpleasant. Like, I, even the people who put, like, clothes pegs and shit on it. I really wish they kept him with the hammerhead forehead, though. God, he looks like Nate Miles. Yeah, that is like. Holy shit. I'm hammerhead. <laughs> yeah. Google Nate Miles if you if you, if you don't know who he is at home. He's an NRL, which is like a, the Australian Rugby League, um, which is like rugby union, but not a boring fucking dude pile. Um, it was always cool because you could just keep blood splattering and it never fucking went away. <laughs> you could just make the console crash if you yeah. did it enough. It'd take like an hour. Yeah. Like a long Still. time. Yeah, yeah um, his bum cheeks. Yeah, and there's this monstrosity called Nate Miles. And it's fucking great, because every now and then someone will be born with this, like, birth defect. But it gives them, like, a mutant ability. And it's really great to see that mutant ability put in a position where it can be used. You know, it's like there was that dude that had, like, a 13-inch fucking hog, and all he wanted to be was a games journalist, which is the funniest. He didn't want to do porn. He had, like, the porn dick. Like, porn companies were like, dude, like, you know, that's money. If you go, hey, look at this, the biggest dick we've found. And it's just attached to some schlubby looking white dude. Like it's the, it's the funniest fucking thing. And he didn't want a bar of it. And you're like, God, that's fucking crazy. It's like how it bugs me the way Yachts doesn't work out. It's like you're really tall and have a good frame. If you lifted weights, you wouldn't look like a stick insect fucked Basil Faulty. See, I love this sort of shit in games where I just assassinated a dude, right? Yeah, by hitting him This in the is back a natural normal. teaching mechanic that doesn't go, hey, hit him in the back. Like, it's it's layering the levels in the way that's teaching you huh. without fucking telling you. And that's really cool. I like that. I wish more shit did that. I, I mentioned this when I was talking about, like, fucking, like, variety and brawlers on the stream uh, the other day. Bibby dip, bibby dip, bibby dip. Oh. Um, you have to be able to miss things for discovery to mean something. Yeah. So, oh. Halo was also a landmark for me because of the music. The music was incredibly well done, atmospheric, and it changed depending on the circumstance. And... This sounds like that fucking, you know, that thing made of PVC pipes that you whack with a thong at the science center? Yeah, yeah. I get you. Sucker. Oh. So the the composer, well, one of the composers, I believe there was two, um, Marty O'Donnell, I found out later on, um, Bungie was an incredible company because every single person nearly in the early stages did something very important. The composer was instrumental in a lot of the way the game ran, the game played. He wasn't just, you know, music. Yeah. He was, they did a brilliant design blog um, a few years back. I can't find it. I tried looking for it. I can't remember what keywords to look for. And they actually talked through decisions with the game and stuff and knowing Marty's contributions, like, holy shit, this would not be the game like it is without him. And that's fucking crazy to me that a composer was that influential, you know? This? Because what was the first thing that got released on... It was like a prequel to fucking... Halo, wasn't it? Yes, that's Halo Reach. Right, yeah, because I started playing that, but then just sort of lost interest straight away because it was kind of like this big open world and it was like a lot of lore and I just like, I don't give a shit. Whereas this looks like a lot more interesting to just play. Yeah. This looks like a playing game. Yes, so Bungie's big philosophy early on was nail that 40 seconds of fun and then just repeat it till the walls bleed. <laughs> and like, that works, you know? If it's fun to play continuously, Gameplay loop is very great, strong, and then the, the, it provides you with like a story that's kind of interesting. That's it. That's why, like, fucking not hard. Not rocket science. It also was very landmark because 
it was FPS on two sticks and it felt natural mm. and it worked. That's, it's still the reason I think Destiny 2 is the best feeling PC game I've ever played for FPS. It's just it. so fucking smooth. <laughs> Little goblin guys. <laughs> yeah, they had great little voices. They were very animated. They're very, they, they have, they're very comedy. You know, it kind of fulfills my innate desire to just murder obnoxious little fat kids. Oh, you can't do that as quick as number two. Kill the fat kid. Get him. There we go. Sir? See, he had a fat kid tuck. They pulled all the fat back and pinned it back into that machinery. See? You got a little back belly. My pistol. With, like these giant battery packs attached to it. And they use the fat as a source of energy. Kind of like that documentary, The Matrix. Except instead of being like plugged into virtual reality, they're turned into little soldiers. <laughs> Africa needs to get on this technology. Ah, oh, there it is. I mean, it'd be like... Oh, it's exercise. Except instead of making them soldiers, maybe we just get them to like... I don't know. If you just get gotta walk it around, they could be like Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah. Thanks, I guess. You hear him? <laughs> He's running above me. Yeah, that's the fat kid pant. In, you know, you gotta hear either that, or if we make them wear corduroy pants, they'll be audible from anywhere. It'll just sound like one of those old steam trains, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's like I, where I live, there's like a creek, and then the fucking main area where all the trains go at night and shit, like just near my house. And it's, you know, it's where all the fucking regular, you know, commuter trains go. It's where the diesels park oh Lord, and shit like jump that. In this. And then just every now and then, because they still run old steam trains and shit occasionally just for a lark. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, who wants to get on a steam train for an afternoon? And, you know, kids enjoy it and shit. And one of them is dressed up like, you know, fucking Thomas the Tank Engine and stuff like that. But it just means that, like, every now and then I'll be laying in bed, hear a steam train, and then the ghostly wail of a steam train fucking, you know, whistle just... <laughs> just, yeah, just echoing across this weird swampy valley in the middle of the night. And you know what? That's fucking sinister. You know, and then there's that combined with the curlews that sound like the ghost of a Victorian baby. I don't know what my flashlight The whole place is. feels haunted. It very much isn't. Because if it was, I'd be meeting blowjob ghosts. I know it. Dude, they'll be, they'd be after you. Yeah, I I, I, attra I feel like I'd attract the blowjob ghosts. Be a good get for the blowjob ghosts. You've got an Ackroyd-ish quality about you. I they... have an Ackroyd-sized head, but not an Ackroyd-sized gut. You know, that's the best of both worlds. <laughs> and, you know, throw in some Venkman-y sarcasm oh, no. and, you know, you just... Arrgh. Dude, I love those dudes. Because they just... Sergeant Johnson backwards and like slowed down and sped up and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love little stories about like sound design in that regard, you know? Yeah. Like the TARDIS was someone dragging a key along piano like strings and then slowed down. Interesting. The Yeti was a toilet being flushed played in reverse. <laughs> you know, because it's just like, it's a, it's a kind of creativity. It is so remarkable, but like, you know, I'm never gonna, it's, you know, never in my day I'm gonna think about, oh, okay, Gabe, you've got like 15 minutes to come up with a new monster roar for this fucking, you know, space goblin we just invented. And, you know, like, that's crazy. Like, I wouldn't even know where to begin. So it's just fascinating, this whole area of, like, really quite ingenuitive, you know, creativity. That's just so alien to my daily experience. Yeah. You know? Like, how are we gonna make this guy sound like a fucking alien? It's like, ah, fucking Jesus, I don't know. And then this is like, oh, well, let's just take Johnson and reverse him, and you know, now he's a fucking monster. Shit, I wouldn't have even thought of that. I'd have just gone onto the internet and like tried to hire a voice actor for a fucking criminally You'd low. You do prices. the sensible thing. Yeah, well, I do. Well, yeah, that's. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't even call it the sensible thing. I just call it the ignorant thing. I guess. You know? Like. Oh, but like I, you know, oh, I need a professional for this, you know. Yeah. Uh, hey, fuck off. You better run. I feel like the gun flip between wallopings is like slightly showing off there. 
You know, Mr. Spartan. We don't, no, we don't need that kind of fucking showboating here in... Are they space marines? What, those things? No, I mean, what fucking Halo... Oh, yeah, yeah, the marines. Faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so they are space marines. Okay. Uh, I, again, I don't know the fucking... Yeah, so... This game. Um, he's genetically engineered, isn't he? That's why he's like fucking eight feet yes. tall. Yes. They were children that were basically kidnapped that had special genetic traits about them. No um, fucking, forced no, into they, servitude. They weren't originally to fight aliens. It was basically humans versus humans, you know, civil war, that sort of shit. Right. Pirates in space, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then humanity made contact with the Covenant and the Covenant proceeded to blow the absolute ever-loving shit out of them. And then the leaders of the Covenant, who are basically an alien church... <laughs> Pretty much. Ah, uh, fucking space Catholics. That explains all the fucking little kids. Use humanity's basically finding as a scapegoat to further their own means. Oh, okay. Progress the universe basically to extinction. Um. So yeah, humanity bands together, forms the US NC, and fights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these people then were given. Experimental suits of armor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Some mad roids. But that's the short of it, anyway. That's enough, you need. You shoot aliens and they go boom, and then I went boom. Uh. No, daddy, no! When you kill the commander, they proceed to scatter and think. <laughs> this game was also very big with AI. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like... Because I remember back in the day, like, basic AI and, like, a ragdoll physics engine was such a big deal. I remember fucking first time I saw a good ragdoll engine in, um, uh, Hitman 2 on the GameCube. And just spend, I could just spend ages just shooting people in different ways to see them fold up and crumple downstairs and flip over banisters. You know, because prior to that, like, you'd shoot a guy and he'd just have, like, in Turok, like, they, you know, they had, like, a few, but it was just still a canned animation, you know? Yeah. So the AI in this was very impressive. As you saw, like, when the commander goes down, the small troops retreat and get scared and shit. Um, the elites had different color armor to signify their ranks, and they played differently or more aggressively, depending... Their rank are. Cool. Um, so you get to the gold elites, who usually have energy swords, which you couldn't use in number one. So it was always very scary because they one hit you. Like, motherfucker. Uh, is that that fucking two prong fucking. Yeah, that's Yeah, true. right. I've seen that a lot. What? Uh, oh. Oh no. Oh no. Help me, big green daddy. I like that he's not like a giant ball sack. Yeah. You know, like that's just a, that's refreshing. Because <laughs> this fucking, like Doom Guy, it makes a bit more sense because really there's barely anything going on in there. Like there's, you know. Yeah. Rip and tear doesn't leave a lot of space for like basic social understandings, you know. He's kind of like, he's probably just a high functioning, or not really high functioning. He's a very specifically functioning autistic. Mm. And then there's Kratos. Who, in the first game, was like, all right, but then just fucking became so obnoxious. It was legitimately annoying by fucking three. I am Kratos. I must avenge my family for this and my sandwich. He just, yeah, I get what you mean. Oh, well, no, in the first one, it's like, all right, you know, death doesn't hold a lot. You know, death doesn't, didn't matter a lot for, you know, for a yeah. long fucking time because you were used to it, you know? To have loads of fucking kids because you just, oh, what happened? Well, fucking something got the fucking little one, like, you know, mystery disease and insect. Nah, nah, yes. You know. He was fucking twerking, dude. <laughs> Halo invented the twerk. Little known fact. Halo eventually, you know, actually started off as an RTS. Really? Yeah. Huh. It was an RTS for the Mac. It was exclusive to the Mac. It was shown off at Mac World. Fascinating. Mac. Um, a fucking there's footage of all explosive. this shit. There's really, it's very well documented. Halo well, was, I mean, was it released or was it? No, 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 no. Mm. So halfway through Inception, 
they that's when they decided to switch it to an FPS and stuff. Then Microsoft got involved and bought it for their launch. Basically, they bought it and then were like, "Hey, we're bringing out this experimental yeah. thing. We like Can you your do it space for marine it? idea? Can you make it like fun and not an RTS?" Are you all right? So they, that's the thing is, at the time they were trying to blend it, so an RTS, but you were more down in sort of control uh, okay, of the action, yeah. and it just eventually led just to be an FPS because it was just better. Like, this was mind-blowing. Yeah, no, I was going to say, the big open world, big open space like that. Like, just on the console, like, seeing this on a CRT TV was just, like, fucking nutty. Or if you were lucky and had a SCART TV, la di da What was SCART, even? Because, like, that was, like, the advanced CRT tech that really didn't... You know, like, there weren't a lot of people who had that shit while it was a thing. Because it just... It's like how we're going to look back on DVDs weirdly, you know? Yeah. Because VHS was around for a while. And then DVDs had like this dominance of like five years. Oh, holy shit, you can actually kill that thing. Fucking pistol. Right. Sog it. Yeah, the pistol's like the best weapon in the game. <laughs> Wasn't there another game that did that recently where it was just like the pistol was fucking broken? Maybe. Yeah, like an accurate two times zoom Fuck like up. that on a fucking handgun's I weird think life back. choice. That one's hard to get. Oh, there's one. What's that? That's a that's a drop that's ship. like Gonzo's nose. Yeah, those drop off troops. So basically, you don't have to shoot those things. You can stealth through here and you can get through unknown. But I made a lot of noise. Oh yeah. This is an achievement for shooting them all down. I'm it's like, a first yeah, person well shooter, not a first person sneaker. <laughs> Fuck him, I don't Just imagine know. a giant yeah. sneaker. I have a gun. I'm presumably some kind of American. Space America. Like, if it's just you and a bunch of fat kids, you know. Uh, there's a gym coach. Woo! So I'm playing on Heroic, which is the difficulty that's kind of the fairest, I think, for the experience fairest challenge. Fairest of them all. Because legendary is just a bit bullshit at times. Again, the thing about difficulty sliders is unless you're putting shitloads of effort into it, they're just going to wind up being stat mods, and those are almost always not strategic and not fun. For the most part, it's it's every difficulty slide in this game is really good. Just legendaries, it throws in bullshit mechanics just for the masochists, things like snipers that will one-hit you and stuff like that, and it's just... It tends to just have a situation not fair because they increase the troop count too. Mm. And the troop count would have been enough. But no, you have to give too much damage to a certain thing and then it just goes like, ugh. Like Halo 2 is notorious for its difficulty on Legendary because of the fucking snipers. There's just two sniper alleys in the game that are just full of jackals and you're just, jackal, it's a jackal, it's a jackal. Mook like, can't take one step without getting fucking hit by a jackal. Yeah, see... That's the thing, like, actual war, that's actual war. Where you're just minding your own business and then you don't even know that you're dead, you know? Yeah. What happened? Oh, a guy you didn't see with a gun could see you and now your head's exploded. And it's like, that, yeah, that's realistic. Uh, you, that's not fun. No. No. Just chuck in permadeath and have it delete my game while you're at it. If you it's fail like, in this game, it deletes your mum. <laughs> no, mum! I'm sorry. If you die in Halo, your mum dies in real life. <laughs> that feels like it could have been... I mean, it almost was an X-Files episode. There's like a VR X-Files episode, which is really bad. Really? Oh, yeah. It's like real great millennial like VR shit, you know? I mean, it's not as bad as that fucking... Or an order episode on gamers, but it's 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 widely regarded as a weak episode and is fairly fucking embarrassing to watch. Are any of you Marines carrying a sniper rifle? Do you have a pistol? Oh no, you're not Marines, you're scientists. God damn it. With the music like this, it just sets the tone. It's just like what the fuck is happening? I hear that gun. Jesus. Because this was early in, 
they didn't really have a set story around a lot of the just NPCs and shit. Sergeant Johnson's known as the Immortal Marine because he's here in this mission. You can kill him, and he just shows up later. <laughs> um, also, there's a. They actually did basically write him nearly canonically to be sort of immortal. <laughs> like, just via dumb luck, he just keeps surviving. Sort well, of he him. had a. He developed a condition from being too close to plasma blasts, which made him a non host for the parasites in the parasite shop. Oh, so is they that can't... the Flood? Yeah. The Flood are like a whole different thing, aren't they? They're not like the Covenants. No, so they were the... There was two basically progenitive races. Sort of, um, you had the Forerunners, as they're known as. The Prometheans, as you learn later. Actually, uh. no, where the Forerunners... No, Forerunners were basically just humans, sorry. It's kind of the same thing. I, I'm, I'm a bit out of loop on the newer lore. Oh, God. And... They built a... They discovered a parasite known as the Flood that would just consume, consume, and multiply till it got everything. So they built a failsafe that would kill all sufficient biomass to support it, which would starve it to death and it would go away. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what's buried on this halo they find. They find out that... Because the, it fires from the halo, the ones on the rings where it went into, like, hibernation or something. So the Covenant didn't build the halos? No. Okay. They they see them as holy relics, and they believe that if they activate them, it will send them to the great beyond. It will. It will yeah. kill them all. And that's why they sort of they manipulate <sighs> the races to get it to happen, because they actually know what is it's going to do. They're dicks. Yeah. Crazy ass religions. Always religions, bro. I'm gonna die. Hello, Dottie Ow! Oh, my bum! Oh, my bum! Oh. I wasn't looking at my health. <laughs> you say get him, daddy? That's what I thought. Where? Oh, there. So these things open up and you can. <laughs> Halo was also really cool because it had shitloads of scripted things, but you could change them. You could interact with them. They never stopped you doing it. Yeah. So like, I would have been pretty early for that in the game too, because like a lot of the time, even today, like it's just here's a thing happening. You're not allowed to interact with. Yeah. Because this is the thing that's happening. On a lot of the open world vehicle levels, you can do things like throw grenades in certain areas to knock down like spaceships before enemies get in them or spawn to them. So you can get in Banshee and fly to places you're not supposed to be early and shit. That's naughty. It is. His reply ain't Helga. Or is where a feisty cherub of man. I like, I've got a very much love for the old style. It was very clean. Uh oh. Another bandit dropping in behind us. They're uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, what was the competition that this would have had back at the time? Shooters? Time splitters on the GameCube. The Time Splitter series Kill Zone on the PS2. I was killing it on the PS2. That's yeah. right. I forgot, I forgot about that. I was like, because it was, I, I always remember the PS3 one as being like. Whee! <gasps> that just looks like a sophisticated spitball gun. Like. Fucking, they're not hidden, that's for sure. It's because. That's. That's the gun the aliens invented to turn humans gay. This is where gay comes from. You get a gay needle in you and then, you know, come back like 100 years later and nobody's reproduced. It's great. I forgot how much of a hassle this fucking area is because it gives you no ammo. Yeah, that's... Because the needle gun looks like it sucks. Like, it sucks to even watch you use the needle gun. Tracking's a bit weak. It just seems like you got to put out a lot and you get like nothing in return, you know? Yeah. It's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really sort of be close and lead the shots. And then you kind of, it will There's work no out. There's guns hidden around here. You guys don't like make ammo or something. You fucking. How much shots? Ah, oh, I got 59 for that. That's good. One of them died. Yes. You can always kill them for ammo. I mean, that's a strat. I feel, yeah, that. You know, that's a bit like non John Spartan. Is that his name? What's his actual name? Uh, John. I fucking. Oh, John. 
John Cena. Look. Come here. Fucking plasma. Ow, my bum! I'm gonna fucking Mega Man zap you. Shot me in the So bottom. one of the most useful guns in the game is the plasma pistol. Because it can just strip a shield in one. And then you just bang him in the head, they're oh, dead. Oh, right, right, yeah, because I forgot that there's the whole energy weapon to get rid of the shield and then physical weapon to get yeah. rid of the chewy insides. And thus, you know, the flood being parasites, fletchets, you know, projectiles are much more effective. I do love flesh out fucking guns, man. What is it? It's like the bullets, but like they're not the needles and magnets shoot them at you. And there's just like a bajillion of them at once and it just shreds whatever the fuck's in front of it. Little punt. <laughs> Who gave the fat kids shields? No, those are the, those are the skinny meth kids. <laughs> oh, look at them! Oh wow, yeah. Whoa, what the fuck? I like seeing the two designs. I like that he kind of looks like a fucking raptor. I think that's kind of cool. That's just a fat pig kid. You all know what little fatty piggy kids look like. Just, it just had such little features that were new to me at the time, like the Covenant Shields having that little one pinpoint. So if you're accurate, you'd like hit them, they'd flinch, and then you shoot them in the head. Like it just rewarded good players, yeah. and it felt really fucking satisfying. I'm just enjoying the name Pelican Echo. And you gained a butt. Oops. Oh, what the fuck? What? Keybinds are fucked. Apparently, two keybinds are on C. Ouch, yes, I want to be C. Thank you. <laughs> Something else is C. <laughs> oh. No, it's not. It's just fucking. That's a. Must be a bug. What's happening when you push C? It's just. It's picking up the weapon, too. It's crouching our weapons, pick them up. No. <laughs> but I think because the natural keybinding. Is C. Oh, so her full name is Roger Cortana. <laughs> I miss the bit. I miss that look of it. I like that one look better. Like, I mean, I don't, but I understand why you do. I mean, I've been playing PC Engine games okay. lately, which is. It's weird playing PC Engine games because you know how there's like Italian and Mexican, and they're both really good. They're kind of different. Imagine if someone, like, invented, like, a third version. Yeah. You know, like, there was just some whole other country we discovered that had its own cuisine. It was kind of like Italian and Mexican, but not. And then you were like, oh, holy shit, I didn't realize, like, there's just new spices and stuff. Yeah. That's what the fucking... mind blowing. Yeah, that's what the PC engine's like. Because it was a 16-bit console in, like, 1987. And then it had, like, a CD attachment in, like, 1989. And so you're playing basically, like... A SNES game, not a SNES game, like a NES game, but with like way better colors or like a NES game with fully voice acted cutscenes and fully voice acted just dialogue and conversations between characters. They're like a whole fucking little chunk of quality of their own and, you know, none of them really are familiar fucking properties. Yeah. You know, so you've, you're sitting there playing like, these games you've never heard of. But unlike most of the time when you're playing games you've never heard of that are on, like, you know, the Spectrum or, you know, fucking the Amstrad or something where it's like, oh, yeah, this might be okay, but it might just be, like, some shitful thing. Some guy fucking coded by himself in, like, a fucking, you know, flat in, you know, England. You know, you're dealing with these, like... And, like, HAL made a lot of games for it and shit, so there's, like, these really weirdly good quality games that just exist in this dimension... It is very distinctly neither Sega and ni nor Nintendo. Look, mate, you need to start shooting. Yeah. Fucking doing a lame-ass job, cunt. Yeah, I I mean, I'm assuming you got to, like, occasionally let go of the shoot button to let it cool down. Nah. That's like, really? Yeah. Infinite. So you can just go fucking bash it with Yeah, it. bro. That's why co-op in this game was so fucking good. Because you'd get... And it was split screen. And someone would get in the fucking gun and just go... Forever. <laughs> it's like... And if you have a good driver... Because, like, driving in itself was a reward because you can kill cunts with the vehicle. Yeah. Well, that and... You know, you're driving around. It's fun. You know? 
Driving a fucking vehicle in a video game is entertaining. Usually huh? GTA 4. Uh. <laughs> I hope you enjoy smooshy suspension. Oh, lordy. I think there's a mod that fixes that. There is, yeah. Although last time I tried to play GTA 4, it was like, nah, son, you're going to have to mod this shit out of it just to get it to run. And I was Ugh. like, ah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's a hassle. Just to see fucking Fatty Bellic complain about me not bowling with him again. Nick, oh my cousin, you want to come see big American titties? <laughs> oh my gosh. Then after an attempt at being serious, they went, all right, fuck it. Meth Beavis. <laughs> Like seeing this, dude, Trevor was like, is, yeah, no, that is. Like, look at the difference. Trevor really is just like if Beavis were good at anything. Yeah. But still basically Beavis. See these things out in Goodner and stuff like that. Like, it's a very Australian bogan thing. Mm. Like, just this constant, like, nose pulled up, you know? Like, they just smelled a big pile of vinegar. <laughs> like there's, there's people that are like that all the time I don't know why how really you know like cause you can like if you do that like if you try to do like a rabbit impression pull your little nose up and then it's up there that takes effort and conscious thought you know it's not just there all the time how did your gun guy get killed oh there? no he's just hanging out there alright yeah see there's his health bar yeah. he's, he's healthy I took all the fucking shots, apparently. <laughs> I mean, well, you are huge. That's true. I'm a brick shit house. I'm a brick. I want to watch Muppets in space now. I suppose now that I think about it, because I just, you know, that phrase brick shit house is a bit weird. But then, like, you know, who'd spend the money to build a shit house out of bricks? You know, like it is, it, 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 it does stand out. So That's all the mind now. If I'm someone actually had a brick shit house, that would be something that feels like it has had an excessive amount of structural work done on it. Yeah, you know, because in the olden days it was just a shed. Yeah, like a little rickety fucking shed that didn't go anywhere. Like that was how my parents shit back in the day. Television got to Brisbane before plumbing did, which is insane. You know, like imagine people on the Enterprise just still pissing against a tree. A guy had to come around and collect it. It was called the Dunny Man. Something that became known about Halo to do was grenade jumping. I can't remember the term for it, but you basically get the second player and keep killing them because mm. they keep spawning with the grenade. And you keep piling up the grenades below the warthog. Okay. And then you blow up the warthog and right. it blows up like, you know, 300 feet in the air, <laughs> launches. And you could, because the warthogs are immortal. Sometimes you could live in them. You get an overshield or something before yeah. and you get them and you've, you're like flipping with it and shit. It was amazing. You wind up in weird spots. Yeah. The people yeah. used to use them to get out of bounds and do crazy things like that. Yeah, sit. Fuck it. I ran into a tree, mate. Yeah. Good, good who? Yeah, steady on, buddy. You can you approach just... this mission in a few different ways. Go this way. There's th basically three sites you need to sort of save Marines from. Oh, okay, so you got it's a big open area with a goal of save marines. Yeah. Basically trying to find Get him! It's a fucking fuck mess sake. kid! Fucking get him! Bro, I'm losing all my health here. You You look you uh, I had to punch him. Are you happy? You didn't <laughs> even get hurt. <laughs> I know. You have an armored gatling gun with what looks like infinite ammo, and you couldn't hit one like fucking Eagle be meth head. You know what? I'm leaving you in a fucking place where you can get flung off a cliff. Alright, please. I can shoot him. Oh that's, my god, he actually got him. That's a good plan. Because then they're just going to shoot at him. And he's seemingly fucking indestructible. Indestructible. A marine is a duck a duck a duck. Big ducker. Okay. Ah, you motherfucker. Don't dodge. That oh, is a really good pistol. Yep. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, oh it's, yeah, it's, it's a good pistol. It's like, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, you want, like, at least a sort of decent side up. Yeah, it's also kind of a sniping rifle. Huh. That feels wrong. Yeah. But I can't remember it, but he's like... Breaking a, the rules. It's like a magnetic pistol or something. I don't know. It's the, like, the law behind it is... There's, there's a universe reason. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, like, mini... I can't even remember. Someone well, will fucking... probably post in the comments going, blah, 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 the lore. Oh, uh, fuck. I hadn't even thought about the fucking Halo chodes. How yeah. bad are they? Uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. I've never really interacted with many. I used to be on a Halo forum, but that <laughs> sort of time was when I was very young and naive, so I kind of... Oh, God. Can't remember anything. That was a brave little fat kid. I do love when someone's trying to run away from a grenade and you shoot them in the leg or something. It is a fantastic feeling. If I were eight feet tall, I maintain I could do a back kick and just annihilate one of those little meth kids. A hundred percent. Just whoop. <laughs> like, even if they had a shield. Like, if I was going to fight like an 11-year-old kid with a shield now, I still think I'd win. Yeah. Like, the shield isn't gonna, you know, isn't gonna, like, help with a big part of this problem. Oh, you fucker. Where do you think you're going? He's <laughs> just crouching, just hiding down there. <laughs> Can't see me. No. I love yeah, that like punch. that. Just bummy knock the little fuck. Get stuck, asshole. <laughs> I do like that you can stick grenades to cunts. That's very, that's a very entertaining game mechanic to me. Oh, sorry, Marines. Sure, you'll be fine. Would this have been one of the uh, earlier games to have, or maybe even the earliest, to have, like, fucking, you know, extra NPCs that actually help you? You know, like running around, shooting, doing stuff like that? I don't know, to be honest. There's... You know, For I'm trying to think of, like, shooter, playing first-person shooters, because I remember one of the fucking Bond games on the GameCube was actually really good. Mm. Uh, there were a few good, like, first-person shooters and, you know, iterations of them on the cube. Like, uh, one of the fucking... Oh, God, what's that fucking series called that we all play now? Call of Duty. You know, one oh, yeah. of the ones that was actually set in, like, World War II. It was on the GameCube. I played that a fair bit. That had like that was a big screen. red one, I think. With the big red Call of Duty. Yeah. Did you drop off those Marines? I mean, like, that thing has to have a huge mongous dick. Because I seen these little terrier dogs one time when I was at a fucking Indian restaurant. And this, this little fucking, it was almost like a purse dog, but with not like, you know, that shivering, trembling leukemia look that those chihuahuas get yeah it was like a, it was a terrier looking thing like i don't really know dogs but it was just one of those fucking size and shapes and it was running along and like its dick was maybe a quarter of the size of it like it was fucking ridiculously proportioned <laughs> and you know it's just just this big Woo! weird herniated dog dick and if you've never seen a dog dick look it up on the internet because they're the fucking weirdest among the weirdest looking dicks you're ever just gonna see you know like, you may have a cat. You're never going to see your cat's dick. Look, are you guys going to fucking shoot it? Please. <laughs> this reminds me of having a play with, like, the fucking AI woman from fucking Resident Evil 5. Yeah. Sheva just sitting there. Hello. My yeah. name's Sheva. Getting herself killed or my personal favorite, using your fucking <laughs> herbs. When she's been injured just slightly. I'm taking damage! And you can hear the, you know, the free noise when it gets used. You're like, no! <laughs> I'm in the fucking stupid swamp area for the giant guys that go... I just turned the AI setting to never use it. And she just died. Uh. Yeah, that's... Five is a weird game. Because it's just Four's engine, basically, and that's still a good engine. The basic gameplay is still good. If you're playing with another person, the game is actually fun. I, I still really enjoyed it solo. It just... its It had its moments. It's largely fine, except for that fucking wet swamp area. That area fucking sucks hull. 
call in a drop ship to pick them up. God, you can see why those American guys go not so and just start like killing innocent people with these long range rifles. Yeah. Like you'd just be hitting people to see if you could. The guy's like a kilometer away. If I could get him. And um, before you know it, a bunch of war crimes that you wind up getting pardoned for. <laughs> I always liked um, in the Marvel comics the Nuke character. Yeah, yeah, he's got some weird, very like some attempted version of the Captain America Super Soldier ceremony. Pretty much, yeah. It's like it's one of those. To the, to the fucking gun nut side redneck though of America. Yeah, because isn't his face like an American flag tattoo? He's good, yeah. Jesus. Daddy. I wonder what color lasers are going to be when we actually get there, you know? Yeah. Because I reckon that it's going to be, like, bright white and we're not even going to really be able to see them, like, if at all. Because when you think about it, like, a lot of these lasers are really moving slower than bullets, and that's kind of not very useful. Like, I think if we get lasers, it's just going to be one of those situations where even if you can, like, film them and see it, like, in, like, slow-mo, you're not going to be able to fucking see it. Because you can see bullets. Can't see you know. light, like traveling. It's just. I mean, if it's going to get shot, it, you're it, dead. It, it, well, I mean, it, I don't think it's going to be light. You know, I think it's going to be like a form of energy that will give off light, which will make them visible. But again, like, you know, all the fucking, you know, guns that the fucking, you know, stormtroopers and shit are using, the fucking red lasers, those are slower than bullets go. Like most lasers in most shows are moving slower than bullets. I remember a guy I know set, like, a fire and then rested a fucking bullet that he had on it. And you could, you saw it go, like... Yeah. Cortana was voiced by, uh, Jen Taylor, who was the original voice Jenna for... Taylor. No, Jen Taylor. Oh, okay. Uh, who was the I original voice for Princess Peach and Toad. Yeah. What did she, uh... What games did she voice Peach and Toad in? Like um... Mario 64? Game Boy Advance games? Huh. Um... Mario 64, I actually think it was a different actress. I can't. Peach. Yeah, I. But the first, like. So, not the first, first, but the, you know, like. When they the started standing actually one. voices. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, this part. Oh, wait, no. Is no. this a multiplayer map? No. Is there a multiplayer map that used like this kind of area as a template? This looks familiar. Isn't there's that one that's got like two buckets or some shit? That's Blood Gulch. So yeah, I can see how you see the similarities. Yeah, similarity in textures, definitely with the old ones like that. Motherfucker. <laughs> Just when you think you got one of the little fat kids. I was that's dead. a dead fat kid. That's only a dead fat kid's only useful as bait for other fat kids because after a while they'll come in and try to eat them. I mean, you guys are just killing yourself. Why do you need me here? You guys are slaying. What are you oh, there he is. Hi. Oh, that guy's got a scar and a story to tell. What are you about? Look at me. <laughs> I work in marketing. Sorry, I should be aiming at enemies instead of looking at your faces. <laughs> Imagine just a seven-foot dude running up to you and just staring. Just cradling your head gently in his mammoth <laughs> Andre the Giant hands. Oh, I hope you die so I can get your ammo. Could just shoot him. This isn't like fucking Stalingrad, Aaron. Don't, don't kill your own men to get their ammo. They do go berserk after a while. Like if you kill too many... <laughs> they will turn on you. And with good cause. They like the cuckoos. <laughs> There's a... Yeah, that's the life of a grunt. Motherfucker. 
in the bum. Because I feel like when we get lasers, they're gonna have to make them like find a way of making them purple or some shit. Like, you no. Know, yeah. Put some fucking patchouli oil in there or something. Spice up. Yeah. Oh, where are you going? I mean, it's just not like a laser battle if I'm not like fucking seeing the lasers go Sir. pew pew. If I'm just pulling a trigger and someone's dying, like, you know, an infinitesimally small amount of time. Might as well be playing laser tag. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, laser tag, you know, for a lot of reasons, but, like, really, it is that issue of, like, the laser is moving at light speed, so it's just not as. It's just not as dynamic as you see in the movies, you know? You're sort of running around, and then every now and again, your shoulders jiggle. Like, uh. Really Look. hard to tell if you've, like, actually hit somebody. Leaving that Marine down there is basically cheating. Because <laughs> they focus on him. And he just fucking well, tears just, him down. That's not cheating. That's strategy, Aaron. That's, that's true. You've given him a target. You've gone up somewhere with a sniper's rifle and fucking, you know, put some thought into what you're doing. And if they're going to look at that obvious fucking trap and go, oh, I'll go over there. No. There's surely nobody up on these fucking hills with a gun with like a fucking some kind of light focusing scope on it. Maybe like a really long barrel that could like keep the bullet going in a straight line over a long distance. You know, if such technology could possibly exist. Because I figure we're gonna. Uh oh. I feel like lasers will be something someone tries and it'll just be impractical. And we're never gonna get lasers. We'll just get like maglev guns or some shit. Magnetic guns and mag guns are just a sword, sword yeah. But I want. I'm with you. I want lasers. Yeah. I want Moonraker lasers. <laughs> Moonraker! I don't know the song. <laughs> Moonraker! Like, Jaws oh, in a thong! That was where Jaws got like a date. That was a good movie. I enjoyed yeah, that and movie. And then, like, fucking, you know, Bond pointed out that, like, Moonraker's fucking genetically perfect moon society <laughs> wouldn't have been a fun place for a giant mutant giant and a girl that's kind of unattractive. <laughs> the two, those are the two kinds of mutations that we understand in society. Is something that makes you behemothly big and is an actual birth defect <laughs> and moderate ugliness. <laughs> Dude, have you seen... You moderately a, ugly woman. Dude, have you seen the... There's a trailer for a thing on Netflix called The Tall, Tall Girl? Um, I, do, I do see a lot of grumbling... From Tall Girls, which is very funny. So for the me. Tall Girl it, it's like is a movie about this thing. woman who's freakishly tall, and she's supposedly like six one. But oh, they yeah. show her in the trailer, and her knees like up to a table. Like she's huge, like obviously like seven or eight foot. Yeah, but it's, it's like, like that off. thing where like a guy that's around five ten is basically a midget, and a woman that's like, if you know, if if a woman's like one hundred and eighty one centimeters, it's yeah. like oh, I fucking who let you off the goddamn? Yeah, no, no. Field I get the gigantica. idea of the music, but the movie, but. <laughs> just making her look freakishly huge, like beyond that size. Yeah. Like, why not go for that then? Just go like seven foot. Fuck it. Yeah, again, just let's just hang out of the netball courts. That's where they go. Yeah. At least in Australia. Australia doesn't really have like women's basketball. It just it has netball, which is well it no, it's there. But it's like you know, I, I don't think really anywhere but Australia and New Zealand have such a massive netball scene. It's kind of weird. Like, I think netball was invented purely because people assumed women would get, like, pregnant and die if they played basketball or something. But, like, That's in weird. America, they just let them play basketball. It's just, like, sort of nobody gives a shit. So what's netball? It's sort of boring to watch. Okay, so netball is a completely different rule set. So but it's like, sort of a basketball court? Is it still a basketball yeah, court? like, it's the way you can play racquetball and squash on the same okay. sort of court. Like, right, it's, right. It, it, it looks similar, but it's a different size. And there's no backboard to the fucking right. hoop. You've got to like arc it up and get it to go gotcha. over the hole, and you're not allowed to like run with the ball. Okay, which really does feel like a steady on their ladies rule, you know? Like, because what I mean, next? I no know, fucking should... elbow jabbing in the throat. I mean, come on. Yeah, like I feel like that should be the trade off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just let them. Although, like, man, I watched a thing. But you have of, to do like, a leaping one. Yeah. It's got to be leaping, or it's not legal. I, I I saw a thing of like lady soccer players being fucking cunts, and holy shit. Oh, dude, I, they're vicious. They are vicious women. Vicious and apparently very sexually aggressive, according to three separate lesbians I know. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking <laughs> league player. Like, just I'm just imagining, you know, like, 
uh, the soccer hooligans from Euro yeah. trip, but, but worse like, than female. Yeah. Oh, like the thing is, you know, a woman that's like fucking five foot five, like a rapey small woman, is fucking terrible. But they're just so small that like nobody gives a I shit. Have a nightmare and tonight, The thanks. problem is that 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 makes them worse and worse and worse. Like they just get worse. They just get you really. You think if handsy, the shorter they like, get, the more proportionate, angrier they get? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. That hits peak in Filipino women. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're right. Actually, tiny, yeah. always hungry and very irritable. You described two people in my life. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was one of my girlfriends. I used to work for a little Filipino lady <laughs> and her daughter. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. You're, you're fucking 100 percent accurate there. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the Americans had to give it up for a reason. Like, mm. See you next time, chubs. Classy is proudly sponsored completely by its fans. We thank you for your support. It expanded somehow. I'll have you know.